and Jay Haight. I hope you're doing well this morning. You have made it to the end of another very, very busy week, so give yourself a pat on the back. Well done. I am in my hallway today, and you'll notice that I'm sitting on a different chair, and I've got this very strange picture behind me. <laughs> today, what I'd like to do with you is to read a poem from this book called Plum. You might recognise this from my shelf in our classroom, my special shelf full of all my favourite books. I am going to read you a poem today in the hope that it will inspire you to write some poetry of your own. So listen up. Instructions for growing poetry. Found on the back of the packet. Shut your eyes. Open your mind. Look inside. What do you find? Something funny? Something sad? Something beautiful, mysterious, mad? Open your ears, listen well. A word or phrase begins to swell. Catch its rhythm, hold its sound. Gently, slowly, roll it round. Does it please you? Does it tease you? Does it ask to grow and spread? Now those little words are spreading poetry inside your head. And it's got a gorgeous picture here as well to show you. I love that. What I'm gonna show you next is an A to Z of writing poetry. So stick with me. Here I am. <laughs> you should see me in the corner of your screen. So what I'm going to do is use some of Pi Corbett's ideas. Pi Corbett is the gentleman who put this poetry book together and who also made famous the idea of talk for writing, which is all of that drama and um, story mapping that we do. He is responsible for that. So we have a lot to thank him for. So he came up with an A to Z of writing poetry, which I will share with you today. Are you ready? Oh, there we go. <laughs> A. Audience. Present poems by performing, making posters, post-its, use email or even stick them in a bottle and let them float away. There are lots of different people that you can reach with your poems. You've just got to have an idea in your head of who might be reading it. Will it be your teacher? Will it be your little brother or sister? Will it be your grandparents? Or will it be a stranger on the street? Brainstorm. B. Look or think about your subject. Make lists of words and ideas to use in your poems. C. Concentrate. I love this picture. I think some of you look like this sometimes in our classroom. Learn to look very carefully and find a space where you can focus. Decide. Writing is about choosing words and ideas. Read Jungle Light to see how it, how it sounds to your ear. Listen to your own writing as if you have never heard it before. So it might help to actually have someone else read it back to you and then you can decide what you like, what you don't like and decide on what you'd like to write about as well. E, experiment. Try out different words and combinations of words and combinations of phrases too. Feelings, write about what moves you. Maybe you can write about something that makes you upset it can be a good cathartic way of dealing with your feelings. Cathartic means that you kind of work through them and you actually feel better afterwards. You might want to write about something that makes you extremely happy. Or you might write when you feel a bit um, sad about something, a bit, a bit hopeful, a bit scared. So you can channel all of your feelings in your poetry as well. G, grow. Let poems have time to grow. Come back to them after a while and see how they sound. Because sometimes when we do a piece of work, even a piece of artwork as well, and um, we step away from it for a few days or for a, a shorter period of time, we end up kind of coming back and saying, oh, do you know what? I don't really like that part anymore. I might change it. So it's an important part of writing poetry. H, habit. Keep on practicing. Write every day. I imagine, take what you know and invent a bit. Play what if or supposing. Cars could break dance and telegraph poles tickle you under the chin. 
Yay, juggle. You don't actually need to juggle here, but what you can do is keep throwing your words up in the air and testing them out and seeing what you like the sound of. Okay, no. Write about what you know about, maybe your interests and passions and obsessions. If you write what you know first before moving on to something more challenging, you'll probably find that it's a bit easier for you. L, look. Become a close observer of the world. Look for the small details in all the things around you. M, mimic. Borrow patterns from other poets and copy. Everyone copies a little bit. Even Shakespeare copied. So don't be afraid to take some ideas from elsewhere to get inspiration and then put your own spin on it. Read daily and learn good poems off by heart. You should let beautiful language live forever in your mind. And notebook. Keep a notebook, jot down some observations or ideas that you've got, and words, things people say, funny things, rhythms and rhymes that you hear, and wrestle with words in there. It can be as messy as you want it to be. O, opposites or oxymorons. So have a think about things like hot, and cold, those are opposites, um, big and small. Or an oxymoron is when you put two words together that make it sound a bit funny, like the cartoon that's here says, I'm a jumbo shrimp. So jumbo means really, really, really large. But when we think of shrimps, uh, shrimp, we think of something really, really small. We could say things like um, loud silences, for example, or soft rock. So think of things that don't really go together. They sound really interesting in your poetry. P is for play. Play with ideas, play with language, so that in the window you can see a sunflower blossom so that the moon grins and the sun is a giant gobstopper. Q, question. Ask tigers who made them and why the stars are so silent and then reply. So question what you see around you, ask questions, be curious. R, recreate, use words to capture your experience. Try to write down what things are really like. So I often say during our phonics lessons, don't I, that um, I want you to take a picture with your mind. So it's almost like in the picture that you can see, you've got a camera in your mind. So take pictures of what is around you and then put that into words. S, secrets. So you can use your imagination to discover the secret world of stones, of snakes, of ants, anything you like. T, trim. Avoid using too many words, just choose the best ones and you can cut away all the ones that you don't need. U, unique. Find your own ideas. Be different in your poetry. V, voice. So I've got a picture here of someone in someone else's shoes, which is a phrase I often use in the classroom. Try to write as if you were someone else, as if you were um, someone from a, a, a period of time long ago, or write as though you're a creature of some description, write as though you're an object, write in role as a chair, <laughs> pretend to be a book, what would your poem say? W, word hoard. Now, as you know, I like to hoard lots of things. I like to keep lots of things in my cupboards because one day I might use them. Do the same with words. Words are delicious. Words are fascinating. Keep all of your words banked away in your brain and try to use some of those in your poetry. When you hear an interesting word, write it down and save it for later. X x-ray look so hard that you can see to the heart so look through things a lot of what pi corbett has asked us to do here is to look through things so look so 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 closely <clears throat> why yourself put yourself into your poems as well as the subject so don't be afraid to say my name is mm, and i'm going to write a poem about mm, and put yourself in there 
and Z, lastly, zeal, which might be a new word for you. It means energy, enjoyment, celebration, enthusiasm, right with zeal. I hope you enjoyed. I look forward to hopefully receiving some poems from you and I am sure that you will come up with something amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you soon.